Hi everyone, this is George here and if you are thinking of investing in property, then you must watch this video as I'm going to share with you what it entails and whether this is the right investment product for you. What are the key things and what's so unique about investment? <laughs> what are some of the pros and some of the cons? Should I buy a new development or a retail one? Now perhaps some of the reason that you want to invest is firstly to be financially independent. That also means you know, working towards um, financial self-sustainability without relying on your job and especially during critical periods such as today's economic market context. Now secondly, to let your money work for you, just like how we are putting our time to earn an income, similarly the money that we have in our bank or savings can in turn generate some form of income. Now third is perhaps to beat inflation rate. Now what this means is that prices of goods and services will increase over time and we'll be buying less with the same amount of time in years to come. And lastly, the plan for retirement. And ideally is to be able to have the financial means to lead the kind of life that we want when we are approaching the 50s or the 60s. Uh, but before you decide to put your hard-earned money to invest, I think it's very important that we understand the characteristics of the various types of investment products as well as the fees involved before you dive in. So let's take a look at some of the common investment products that are out there in the market today. Now you have stocks, bonds, commodities such as gold and silver, cryptocurrencies, REITs as well as properties. Now if you have to take a look at this table, there are some key takeaways. Firstly, stocks and commodities are highly liquid and all you need is just your phone and your internet and you'll be able to buy and sell in a matter of seconds. Now, stocks and currencies are volatile and best suits those that have a higher risk appetite, which then translate to higher returns and losses. Now, other than properties, the rest of the investment products actually incur very low transaction fees, with some even starting from 20 or 30 over dollars. So, in a nutshell, if you are an investor that values liquidity and you have a higher risk appetite, then property might not be the one for you. Property, on the other hand, is highly illiquid. Now the entire sale and purchase timeline can range from months to even years depending on the contract drafted between buyers and sellers. You will also require a higher capital outlay with a minimum of 25% down payment, whereas products such as stocks require as little as hundreds of dollars to start. Now thirdly, on top of your purchase price, you will also incur other fees such as your stamp fees, your legal fees, agent commission fees, and not forgetting your running costs such as your property tax as well as your MCSC maintenance fees. So despite all these factors, you might be thinking why is property still an investment choice for buyers? So let's take a look. Firstly, the ability to leverage. So unlike other investment products where your capital outlay is equivalent to the cost of goods, for property investment, you will be able to leverage up to four times your investable capital. Say for example, if you have $200,000, you will then be able to buy a property worth approximately $800,000. So by leveraging, you will then be able to stretch your dollar. Now secondly, property prices in Singapore is more stable and slower to react. Now again, unlike other investment products such as stocks or cryptocurrencies and even commodities where they react very strongly to market sentiments or even just a Twitter message can send the price by 10 or 20% both ways. So for properties in Singapore, especially after a slew of cooling measures in place, uh, properties are hardly a speculative investment product and thereby providing the stability that investors are seeking out for. So if you have to look at this chart where we compare the property market to the financial market by putting a property price index against the Straits Times Index, now past statistics have proven that the property price index tends to lag the STI between 1 to 4 quarter, where the property market only feel the impact at a much later stage. Now this gives investors sufficient reaction time to readjust their portfolio, making property a more resilient investment product. Now lastly will be legacy planning. Now one of the main reasons people buy property is for legacy planning where they are able to will to their children or even purchase it under a trust for their beneficiary, can be their children or their grandchildren, and therefore giving their next generation a head start. At the same time, while they own the property, they can also get to use it since it is their asset and they can then choose to stay in it. So there you go. To recap, um, if you have a huge risk appetite and you value liquidity, then investment is not for you. Now on the flip side, if you prefer stability and the ability to leverage attracts you, then investment product might be the one for you. So of course, there are still a lot of factors to consider when buying a property. And while not all properties will be able to generate new profit, 
I think analyzing them with a methodical approach will give you an edge. Alright, so I hope this episode gives you an insight into property investment, the blind spots to look out for, and whether this is the right investment product for you. Alright, see you in the next episode.